Hello and welcome to a narrated tour of the 2013 Operation Ice Bridge campaign over the ice sheet, ice caps, glaciers, and sea ice of the Arctic. Here to help us know what we're seeing and tell us a little bit more about the mission are Operation Ice Bridge project scientist Michael Studinger and NASA sea ice scientist Nathan Kurtz. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Michael, can you start us off and just describe what we're seeing here? Yeah, this is a uh, typical early morning at uh, Thule Air Base in northern Greenland uh, when it's uh, still early in the year, probably sometime in March when the sun is low on the horizon in the morning as you can see here in these images. And we are following the uh, vehicle here on the uh, taxi ramp that brings us to the airfield uh, after we made a decision in the morning to fly. You can see that the uh, runway is a little icy here occasionally. <laughs> And also an interesting change here, you see that the runway here in Thule is white. And this is not actually snow on the runway, but the runway in Thule is actually painted with white color to keep the um, uh, albedo down during the summer in order to avoid the uh, permafrost melting there. Excellent. And so after takeoff, there's usually some sort of a transit time, is that correct, to get to the place that you're studying? Well, if we fly a uh, sea ice mission, we, we often have uh, half an hour or an hour to get to the um, sea ice north of Thule, which you can see here. But if we fly land ice mission, we often start recording pretty much right away as soon as we are allowed to uh, get out of the seats and uh, walk around in the aircraft. Nice. So this is one of the early sea ice missions in the campaign. Uh, can you tell us why, why is it named Cryosat? What does Cryosat have to do with what we do? So what this mission was trying to accomplish was underfly a satellite called Cryosat, which was launched by ESA in 2010. Uh, Cryosat is a radar altimeter, which measures the height of a, the surface above a, a reference level. So in this case, we're trying to measure the height of the sea ice surface above the water level. So you can see water in the video. So Cryosat, when Cryosat flies near water, gets a strong return from the water, it pretty much dominates what is seen by the radar. But then when uh, Cryosat flies over rough sea ice, the, how rough the sea ice is, you can see ridges in the sea ice, uh, different features in the sea ice, Cryosat responds very differently to those features. And we were trying to fly a, a grid pattern over the entire, it's called the footprint of Cryosat, which is up to a kilometer and a half to cover it with measurements to see how the, the Cryosat radar return looks. Sounds good. And I want to point out to everybody that the video that you're seeing right now is sped up about three times. So the, the plane is, a, the flight is a little smoother than it appears from some of these. And uh, throughout the course of this video, we'll play with the time quite a bit, but sometimes show it at the real pace too. And Nathan, do we, uh, do you care much scientifically uh, or have much interest in the sea ice that is in these fjords and is sticking, sticking close to the coast? Or are you mainly concerned about the main kind of ice packs out um, in the ocean? We're mainly concerned with the, the ice in the main ice pack. Now there is uh, interest in the ice in the fjords and how it interacts with the, the ice shelves. Because uh, sea ice around can dampen ocean waves, things like that. These are really poorly understood processes. Uh, so there is a branch of scientists who are who do like to study the sea ice. Um, a lot of the sea ice studies that are done, say at NASA Goddard, are more focused on the more central pack because that's the, the more larger climatological feature that we want to see changing. Moving on to the next mission, there's one here called Laxon Line, uh, another sea ice mission, is that right? Yes, that's correct. And this is actually one out of the two most important uh, sea ice flights that we have, since it's covering the uh, entire Arctic Ocean from an area a little bit north of Alert all the way down to the uh, coast of Alaska. So we get a profile over uh, the entire Arctic Ocean there, which is a tremendous data set. And we're doing this on two lines. One in the north is called the uh, Laxon Line, and we also fly back from Fairbanks along a transit or profile slightly south of it to get a, uh, a second sample of the uh, sea ice across the entire Arctic Ocean there. So what we see in terms of the sea ice is 
around Greenland, the ice is very thick in north of Canada. That's where we see the thickest ice that stays around all year. As you head towards the uh, Alaskan coast and towards the, the Russian Arctic, the ice gets thinner. It's ice that only stays around uh, one season. It's called first year ice. So what we're doing is profiling the thick ice because the thicker that is, the uh, changes in the thickness of the ice determine in part how long it will stay around. Can it survive a summer melt? The thickness of the ice north of Alaska and Canada has been changing quite a bit. We've seen it decrease in thickness by almost half, whereas the thickness in the first year ice areas hasn't been changing quite as much. But again, by getting a profile, we, we can learn quite a bit about the, the sea ice in these regions. So we're, we're moving in for a landing here in Fairbanks, Alaska. So is sea ice the reason why we're going all the way to Fairbanks? Yeah, that's correct. Starting last year, we have expanded our activities in, uh, from Fairbanks quite a bit. And the reason uh, for this is because we can reach the uh, Chukchi and Beaufort Sea from Fairbanks, which we can't do from um, Thule in Greenland. And uh, those are fairly important areas for the people who live in Alaska, uh, for the uh, population there, also for industry like oil companies. So that's um, scientifically, of course, a very interesting area, but it also really impacts people working there on the sea ice or having to deal with sea ice on a daily basis. And profiling the thickness, which Icebridge does over those regions, is very important because uh, it's those areas that used to be what's called multi-year ice. The ice used to stay around there all year. And in recent years, the ice has been seasonal. So it comes and goes. Uh, in the summer, it melts away. And by determining how thick it is, which Icebridge is, is measuring, it gives us an indication of what's happening in the climate. Why is it thinning? Why is it going away in the summer? Excellent. And so I understand this is leaving Fairbanks. Can you tell us uh, what's different about this image? Yeah, when we uh, take off in Fairbanks and fly back to Thule, because of the, uh, I think, five or seven hour time difference between Thule and Fairbanks, we actually have to uh, take off around midnight in Fairbanks in order to land in Thule before four o'clock in the afternoon when they close the airport there. And that means we are flying the first almost two and a half, three hours in complete darkness. Well, here we are. We're going to close out the video here with the North Pole transect. So I think we're, we're leaving land here uh, and heading back out to sea. So what do we have right below us right now? So below right now is some of the thickest ice that we see in the Arctic, actually in the, the world, the thick, thickest sea ice. And that's because the circulation of the Arctic Ocean is such that the ice gets pushed down towards the, the Greenland coast, towards Canada. And when it gets pushed down, it gets uh, compacted. And you see those large ridges, which are down below. And that makes this ice very, very thick. So it's this really thick ice that forms what's also called this the multi-year ice pack. And so what we're flying here is we're flying up towards the North Pole. So we're sampling the, the thickest ice. We're trying to see how thick is that ice. And as we get towards the North Pole, we start to get towards the boundary of where the seasonal ice in this multi-year ice uh, area is. And so we start to see a decrease in the thickness of the ice as we, we go out. And how quickly the, the ice thickness decreases out towards this area tells us something about how long can this ice survive? What's happening to the ice in terms of uh, a changing climate? Because we've had submarine measurements in the past uh, few decades, which have historically profiled quite a bit along this region near the North Pole. And there's also uh, lots of historical interest in the North Pole region itself. There's uh, camps, people put buoys out, lots of measurements around the actual North Pole itself. So this, this transect is very important because it tells us, you know, how is the ice changing from the thickest out into that seasonal ice region. Excellent. Well, thank you. This has been great. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah.